I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on vectors. We will talk about dot product and its properties in this particular video. So if I have two vectors, let us say A and B, so this is my vector A, this is my vector B. In that case, dot product is defined as A dot B. That symbol gives its name dot product is equal to magnitude of vector A times magnitude of vector B times cosine of angle theta between them. Now as you see on the right side we have three things which are scalar in nature. right? So what we observe here is that the result is a scalar quantity. It's just a number. It could be a positive number. It could be a negative number. right? So mainly because cos theta for example is what? In a coordinate plane you know that all are positive in coordinate 1. But sine is positive in coordinate 2, tan in 3 and cosine in 4. Now as far as theta is concerned, as far as theta is concerned, we know theta could be between 0 to 180 degrees, right? So, so in this particular case, we know the value of theta could actually be between 0 degrees to 180 degrees where both are included. What I'm trying to say here is something like this. Let us say if I have a vector A, right, and if I have a vector B, which is, let's say something like this, and the angle between them is theta, then you will normally take the angle which is between 0 to 180 degrees, right? So that will always be the angle. Well, some of you could also take this angle, which means that this could be greater. But it is always better to take between 0 to 180 degrees. You will get the same result though, mainly because cos theta is an even function, right? So, so it is very well defined between 0 to 180 degrees with all its possible values. So what we do normally is that even if I have a situation where the angle is kind of like this, let us see. Let's say we have some other uh, vector here and it is kind of like this. In that case, the angle theta will always take when they are tail to tail and then we take the angle which is less than 180 degrees. So this is a very important concept to understand. So place your vectors tail to tail whenever we are talking about this angle theta and that angle theta should always be between 0 to 180 degrees. Is that clear? Now this is extremely important point to be understood. Now since we understand that cosine is positive in quadrant 1 but negative in quadrant 2. That is to say that now I have the value of a dot b which could be either positive or negative or even 0, right? So, so we could have a value which is positive. We could have a value which is 0 and we could also have a value which is negative, correct? The value will be positive if the angle theta is between 0 to 90 degrees, correct? And it is going to be 0 when the angle theta is equal to 90 degrees and is going to be negative if the angle theta is from 90 degrees to 180 degrees, correct? We'll include 180 degrees here and we'll include 0 with the positive value. Does make sense to you? So that is how you should see your dot product, correct? Now here are interesting cases to look for. That is to say that if I do the dot of a vector by itself, in that case, what do I get? I get magnitude of A times magnitude of A times cos of, well, the angle between them is zero. 
cos of 0 degrees. That is to say that a dot a will actually result into square of its magnitude. Right. So, this is also a very important application of dot products. So, we could always say that if you want to find magnitude of a vector, in that case, we can say the magnitude of a vector a will be equal to square root of its dot product. Perfect. So, so that is kind of important to understand. Okay. Now, Amongst these properties, you will see since cos theta is maximum when theta is 0, right? So that means if I have to maximize the dot product, so if this has to be a maximum value, that really means that theta is equal to 0 degrees. That means they are in the same direction, right? So that basically means that both these vectors vector a and the vector b are in the same direction or they are collinear correct so with this background let us look into some properties of dot products right okay so whenever dot product is type of a multiplication but it is very different also so while discussing the properties, we'll also answer the question, how is it different? From multiplication properties. I'll write normal here, right? Multiplication properties. So I'm keeping that in view so that you understand that they are actually very different, right? But many times students will ask, how are they different, right? So we'll have to look into this also. Okay, so let's begin with the basic property, which is A dot B is equal to B dot A. You can see here that both are magnitudes. If I interchange their position, then it doesn't really matter. The angle between the two vectors always remains same. The angle is taken when they are placed tail to tail. Correct? So this property is called commutative property. So we'll write its name, which is commutative property. So we'll just write commutative. Okay. Now, it is also distributive. So let's write distributive and see what is distributive property. It is actually distributive over vector addition. Right? So, which by which we mean that if I have a vector which is A and if I have a dot product with B plus C, in that case, the result will be a dot B plus A dot C. So it is distributive over vector addition. Right? So that will remind you of a case where, you know, we talk about distributive and now we're talking about multiplication. We also took commutative property. So we have involved now three vectors. Now the question here is that if I have A dot b dot c then what well in the vector world this is not defined reason being that the dot product of vectors is only possible between vectors right so so in this particular case if you do dot product of any two of them let's say you do dot product of this it will result into what? Scalar. Right? So now, A dot scalar quantity is not possible. You could have scalar multiplication. You get my idea, right? So, so the idea here is to understand that dot product is between 
two vectors only, right? So we cannot have this combination of a dot scalar, right? We cannot have a dot scalar that is not defined. So this is not possible, correct? So this is not defined. Does make sense to you? So that is why we do not have any associated property of dot products, correct? Okay. Now, however, we could have scalar multiplication. So we do have scalar multiplication. Now, when I say scalar multiplication, it really means that if k is any scalar quantity, I could multiply this with a and then have a dot product with vector b. Now, that will be exactly same as having a dot product of a with a scalar multiple of b. Right? Or even I could do something like this. That is, I could write this as a dot b and then multiply by the scalar or scalar times a dot b. I mean, you get the idea. So all this combination is possible, right? a and b could be scalar multiples and it works. So that is possible, right? So we have a commutative property between the two vectors. Order doesn't really matter. We have a distributive property over vector addition. That's kind of important to understand. And we do have this scalar property. Now, as far as zero is concerned, what happens? Now, for zero, we have that if, let's take, we take non-zero vectors, like right? if we have, if two non-zero vectors, dot product is zero. That means what? Then, they are perpendicular or orthogonal. Does make sense. So what I'm trying to say here is that if a dot b is equal to zero, so that basically means that a is perpendicular. to vector b. Is that clear, right? a is perpendicular to vector b. And we're talking about two non-zero vectors, right? It is important to specify non-zero vectors because if one of them is a zero, then even if they are not perpendicular, you are going to get zero as your result. Perfect. So that is, in short, basic properties of dot product. Now, I spilled over on this side. Here is one more important criteria which I like to mention, and that is we do not have a cancellation property here. In dot product, like in, in multiplication, we have kind of if A times B is equal to A times C, that means that means b equals to c in normal multiplication. I say product. Correct? But in dot product, when we talk about a dot b as equal to e dot c, so that means the question is, will vector b equal to vector c? That is the question for you. Correct? So if a dot b is equal to a dot c, will vector b be equal to vector c? Now the answer for this is absolutely not, right? So it is no. So equal to a dot c, that does not mean that b will be equal to c, right? Important thing here is a dot b is a b cos theta. So there is a term cos theta in between b and c. Do you see that? In short, Think about it like this. When I say a dot b equals to a dot c, I'm basically implying that b cos theta is equal to c cos theta, c cos of, let's say, phi, right? So these angles could be different, right, between a and c and a and b, right? 
where phi is the angle between A and C, theta is the angle between A and B. So when we say A dot B equals to A dot C, we are actually saying B cos theta is equal to C cos phi. It's a different angle. Perfect. We are not saying that B equals to C. We cannot say that B equals to C. Writing B equals to C will be incorrect. That's what I want to conclude. I hope you find this video informative and interesting. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.